So hurricanes, it's like going to battle. You have to be prepared. You have to know what to pack. You have to know what to have in order to succeed in beating the battle and in order to thrive, to survive during the storm. Now, why do we want to treat this as we're going to battle? Because technically, really, we are. And I want to put this in layman's terms. This way here, a lot of people understand what I'm talking about. And I want you to stick around because in the end of this video, I have some really great tips and tricks that can help preserve your food and your water in a time of need, in a time of a disaster. Now, hurricanes are the most predictable um, disaster that's out there. Floods are right there with it because they can always tell if it's raining upstream really heavy, water flows downstream. Most water flows from north to south, with the exception of a few rivers. All right, <clears throat> so they can tell if it's raining real heavy to the north, all that water is going to hit these different rivers, water basins, and everything else, and they are going to flow south so they can predict when the rising water will occur in certain areas. Now, flash floods are a totally different situation because you have no warning. Whereas in a hurricane, you always have a warning and more than likely you're gonna have a prediction of when it's gonna be there. Now, they do all these spaghetti models and, and you know, you have the cone of uncertainty. You notice that when it gets towards the end, it gets really huge. And that's just because uh, the computer models and the people, they just don't know what it's going to do. You know, they're trying to predict Mother Nature with computers and everything nowadays, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So it's up to us to be prepared for the battle. Now, when you're starting off, when you want to be prepared for the battle and everything, the first thing you want to make sure that you have is your go bag. If you're a soldier and you're headed out into battle, the first thing you're going to grab is your backpack, your go bag, whichever one you want to call it. All right, in that bag is going to be everything that you need to survive. Unlike if we were soldiers and stuff, you know, we more likely won't have ammo in here. Maybe you will. That's fine and dandy. You put in here what you have to have to survive. So you want to make sure that you do have a change of clothes. Maybe you have some food, you have some shelter, uh, some first aid and those type of things. All right. That's your go bag. That's your emergency. Get away. I got to go. Blah, blah, blah. And hit the road. Okay. So you can grab that and go. Depending on where you live, you might be able to leave it in your vehicle. If you live like I do down here in Florida, it's not something you want to leave in your vehicle so much um, because of the heat. Now, if you have stuff that's in there that's heat sensitive and that type of stuff, it's not going to fare well. So this is a really touchy situation. If you live someplace where you have more normal temperatures, you know, you could have that in your vehicle at all times. Now, if you are traveling, you can take it with you so on and so forth. You also want to make sure that you have first aid. Now you can have first aid in here, but you want to make sure that you have a really good first aid kit. You just never know. You know, little Johnny could be trying to help pick up debris after the storm and he gets a splinter. He cuts his hand on a nail, uh, on glass, whatever it could be. You want to make sure that you have some way to tend to that because more than likely calling 911 may not work. And if you do, when are they going to show up? You can't let little Johnny sit there and bleed to death. So you got to be prepared. You want to make sure that you have a really good first aid kit full of all the different things that you know how to use, which is very critical. You know, you can buy little handbook manuals and everything else uh, just about anywhere nowadays, and they will, you know, kind of like walk you through different types of scenarios. You also can download um, different apps on your phone that you can use offline. Now, that's very important. If you're looking for apps for survival, you want to make sure that that app is a app that can be used offline. This way here, if you have no cell service and whatever may happen, but you have ways to, you know, keep your phone going, you can access those apps and those informations and get that information in a time of need. That's just a little tip right there. All right. <clears throat> so once we do have our first aid and everything else, the next thing you really want to think about is water. All right, now over here, you know, you can buy these 40 packs of water. You can get these at Walmart, $3.98. All right, you can buy the gallon jugs of water. 
You know, you usually can get those between 78 and 86 cents. Depends on which Walmart you go to and if they're having a sale on them. They really haven't had much of a sales on water lately because I think a lot of people are really starting to get the idea that, hey, you know what? We got caught with our pants down when Charlie Victor 19 come to town. It ain't going to happen again. So <clears throat> a lot of people have been stocking up and started prepping. That's just, that's the name of the game now. Uh, there's been a huge blow up of people searching for information either on the internet, on YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you want to get it from, Instagram. You know, the information's out there. You just have to go and look for it. <clears throat> now, let's move on up here. Let's talk about battery products, all right, real quick. Now, you can get a battery power radio just like this one right here. All right, I've had that one for years. Runs on C batteries. It takes six C batteries. Some run on D batteries, some run on C batteries. You can get this little dinky thing on top for less than 25 bucks on Amazon. It's a rechargeable radio that you can recharge with, you know, a battery bank, a solar charger, anything like that. You can charge that thing right back up and you never have to worry about changing your batteries. You just have to have a way to charge it. All right. Now, speaking of batteries, you want to make sure that you, you can buy these cases right here. I've uh, done videos and stuff on a lot of this said product, folks. But you can buy these cases on Amazon. They're really cheap, all right? And you want to make sure that you have batteries that you need. Don't buy batteries if you're not going to use them. As you can see, I have no 9 volts. I don't own anything that is 9 volt, all right? The 9 volt battery is, if you want to think about it, is almost going along the lines of the cassette tape when we went to CDs, all right? There just ain't that many things that take 9-volt batteries anymore, all right? The other batteries have kind of replaced those. And you can get rechargeable batteries and everything else as long as you have a way to charge them. It's all in what you can do and what you can afford. I would suggest using buying good batteries, at least Energizers or Duracells, whichever one you can afford. But if you can't afford that, go to the dollar store. You can always get you some batteries that'll get you through an emergency hurricane type situation that'll probably last you for at least that 24 to 36 hours until hopefully by that time, maybe the power is starting to come back on or you just have buy some extra batteries because you can buy them for like a, a dollar a pack, you know? <clears throat> Yes, they're not going to last as long as Duracells or Energizers, but on a tight budget, they will do and get you through the storm. There's a lot of things that you can buy at the dollar store that will get you through the storm. Um, that'll be coming in a video near you soon. Let's move on down the line. Flashlights. Now, all different types of flashlights, okay? You always want to make sure that you have one good, sturdy flashlight. All right, one that will take a beating, maybe it could be self-defense and everything else you need, a one good, spend the money, one good solid flashlight to make sure that, you know, you always have light regardless. You'll call it old faithful. All right, now for me, that's my mag light. I've had that mag light for almost 30 years now. I've put that thing to hell and back and it works just fine. Now I have replaced the, the bulb and that kind of stuff, but that's the only thing I've had to do to it. It's waterproof. I use it to bang in nails. I mean, I mean, you can use it for self-defense, whatever. You can get them. That's a two cell. You can get them in three, four, whatever. I mean, you can get the ones that are like a, a four, six cell battery. And it's like a huge baton you can reach out and touch someone with, if you get my point, without going into details. Now, I'm a big advocate for headlamps because... In an emergency type situation, more than likely, you will need these. These are your lifeline. You can have all these products, but you need these to accomplish anything that we're talking about here. So having your headlamp connected to your head, on your hat, however you want to do it, all right? Some of them do have you can buy different straps and you can strap it right around and put it right on your chest right here. As long as it's somewhere, I like it on the head. This way where, where I look, I can see. I can do what I need to do with these. Speaking of these, make sure you have these. Make sure you have different style of gloves for different types of situations. Some that are maybe fireproof, some that maybe have, you know, the hard backing on the back. So if you're chopping, sawing something along that lines, you know, you're protected. All right. 
just your basic you know you could have your carpenter gloves where you have a few fingers free if you're just doing some basic work and things but you want to make sure that you protect these are very important all right <clears throat> moving on down the line let's talk about trash bags you can buy these carpenter bags you can get them between three to six mil all right the thicker the better three mil will work just fine you could build shelters with this you can use these to cover windows um, you can use these for just about anything and they come in handy you always want to make sure that you have some of these carpenter trash bags and you the thicker the better the six mil are very hard to find and are very expensive three mil will work but if you can afford the six go with it all right <clears throat> moving down that same type of line with a shelter or that type of stuff tarps are going to be your next best thing that you want to make sure that you have and here's the reason why folks okay after a storm comes through or something you may have to put up a tarp over a window if you didn't have hurricane shutters you may have to patch your roof and until the roofer can come and replace your roof because you have a hole or it's leaking and everything else so you want to make sure that you have tarps because once the storm goes through and the storm is gone the first thing that's going to go is tarps because everybody else is going to be in the same situation as you and you're going to be needing to plug a hole a window or whatever else it may be this way here you can take care of it yourself you already have your product you don't have to worry about it along that line you're probably going to need nails screws your basic toolkit all right you need a screw gun with screws you also need um, extra batteries for that you need hammer nails um, extra piece of plywood probably wouldn't hurt that you can cut down and use it in case you just need to do one little window or maybe you need to do the whole window you know uh, plywood prices are starting to drop and so that's a very good thing since we're coming into hurricane season because a lot of people go through plywood you know you also want to make sure that you have your standard hammer nails uh, uh, you want pliers you want different types of i have several different sizes wrenches your phillips and straight head screwdrivers and you should be pretty much good to go you kind of can cover the basics on that and this way here you have at least a small little kit that is ready to go when you need it all right now speaking along the lines of having a tool kit or something you may want to take and get yourself a firebox a waterproof firebox now you say survival preparedness for beginners why do i want to get one of these all right for one you can store all your important papers all your um, medical information everything else you put it in here and it's fireproof it's waterproof you don't have to worry about it if you have to leave on a moment's notice it is ready to go when you are it has a handle right here just make sure you have the keys with you or well you're not getting in it and you want to make sure that you store all the different types of things you know you could put some pictures in here jewelry one thing that i would suggest doing if a hurricane is coming i would buy a um external hard drive for your computer system and if you have a home computer not like a laptop that you can take with you buy one of those this way you can back everything up on that you put that bad boy in here and this way here no matter where you go if you have to access your insurance information your health information and all this kind of stuff you can whip that out plug it into any computer and access that information in an emergency type situation if you need proof of different things you also want to make sure that you do have copies of anything that has to do with any of your animals you will need proof if you're going to go to a shelter that your animal has had its shots and all that kind of stuff and everything is up to date with your animal and that your animal is registered with your local town so you want to make sure that you have that information have them email it to you so maybe you can access it through your phone but also have copies of it stored inside of your firebox now <clears throat> moving on down the line let's talk a little bit about battery banks all right now this right here this is a cheap one i got at walmart i did a video talked about this thing okay it's a go power plus it's only a little 100 watt system all right so i would use that to charge say my cell phone's headlamps maybe my radio something like that and save my 300 watt for particular other things you know the 300 watt rock piles that i have 
you know, that will run fans, lights, and that kind of stuff. Will not run my refrigerator. It won't run my AC. It's not going to run any of those big objects. But it will give you some light, give you a fan. If the power's out and you, it's hot, that's going to be a lifesaver. I do have battery chargeable fans, so I can plug those up, charge them, and everything else. Now, if you are going to go with any type of battery bank, do your homework and find the one that's going to be right for you because they range in prices from 50 bucks all the way up into the thousands of dollars. So it's whatever you can afford to do. But if you're going to buy one of those, you also have to have some way to charge it, which I have right back here, which is the Rock Piles 100 watt solar charger. Comes with all the different adapters. I can plug in probably about eight things on that thing at one time and charge them. It's made to primary charge this, but it comes with all the different adapters. So I can charge my phone, I can charge headlamps, flashlights, radios, uh, my fans. I can recharge anything that has the capability of being rechargeable. So that's a really great thing, but you want to make sure that you do have a solar panel that you can put out in the sun and charge all your said products during the day while you don't need lights and all that kind of stuff. You might want to make sure you're charging your battery banks if you're using those at night. Now, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about cooking. All right, so if you're like me, I have a glass top. I hate it. All right, rather have gas, but it is what it is. All right, so I have an electric stove. Now, the downside to that is more than likely if the hurricane is above a two, you're going to lose power. Your power may stay on a little bit longer depending on the area you live in and the infrastructure of your area. Now, in my area, they are always working on updating and burying lines and doing all this kind of stuff because, let's face it, the water is about uh, six blocks that way. So, you know, I mean, they're, they're really putting a good effort in to try to deter power being out longer than it has to be in poles in the air. But if, and you live in an area where they haven't really done that yet, because it is a very expensive process, you can't cook. You don't have power. What are you going to do? It's useless. You can't do anything with it. It is useless. That's when you got to fall back to your good old Coleman stoves, um, your gas ones, and these type of products. Okay, now it doesn't have to be a Coleman stove. You can go to Walmart and buy their brand. All right. Or you can buy, you know, whoever's brand. All right. The, the, the thing I'm trying to get across here is you want to make sure that you have some way to cook. It's what you can afford. OK. Now, the gas one does run on butane. All right. The Coleman stove runs on propane. You can buy the adapter to switch your gas one from butane to propane. Did I lose you? All right. You can also buy an adapter to run your propane stove, which you could also run your gas one with this adapter off of a 20 pound tank. So you wouldn't necessarily need these. You could run it on a 20 pound tank, which you can cook for a lot longer folks. And this way here, boom, you just plug it right into here, turn on your 20 pound tank and you're good to go. And you're gonna be cooking for a long time with just a stove, all right? So you'll be able to cook a lot of meals and everything else. Now, something else you wanna make sure that you have, matches, all right? Now, I would suggest waterproof matches, at least having some waterproof matches, because you can buy these um, little boxes of matches right here, 88 cents at Walmart, all right? At least that's what they were the last time I bought them. That was uh, last year sometime. They're probably gone up. I haven't looked in the stores. Um, maybe somebody could put in the comments if, you know, they see any of the prices, all right? <clears throat> but you gotta have some, play, some way to, to light some of these said products. Bic lighter. I've said it in several different videos, you can't go wrong. All right, you gotta have a Bic lighter. Uh, they'll, they'll lighten anything. All right, <clears throat> just a utility lighter. You know, I mean, they're great for lighting the stoves and stuff because some people don't like to get too close to the little flame there because it does a little poof thing. All right, well, you know, it is what it is, but so get you a utility lighter. Now I have, t I have done videos and stuff and I talked about how 
you know, if you needed to make fire and stuff, how you can use the cotton balls with the Vaseline. You just take and you just soak those suckers really good and everything else. You can use a ferro rod or something like that. You can use a lighter, whatever it is. You know, you just need to get a spark inside the middle of it. You pull it apart. You put it in the middle, boom, you light it. And with the petroleum jelly on the outside, the thing that's going to burn for quite a while gives you a chance to get a fire going if that's the route that you ever had to do. So <clears throat> we're covering a lot of different things here. You also want to make sure that you are getting paper products. And you ask, why paper products? And that's what we're coming down to here towards the end of this video, because now we're going to get into the tips that I promised you in the very beginning. So thank you for staying with me and watching this video so far. And here we go, because this is a lifesaver. When it's coming down to a hurricane, all right, one reason you want to make sure that you do have your paper products and everything is, is because more than likely, nothing's going to come out of here. They're going to turn off your water. So before the storm hits, here's some tips that you need to do. Number one, fill your sinks up. Fill all your sinks up in your house, all right? Fill them up with water. You know, do your kitchen sinks, do your bathroom sinks, all right? Your bathtub. Here's a great thing that you can use to get a lot of water, folks. All right, you can go on Amazon for less than $30. You can buy what is called a bathtub. Um, it's like a big bubble, okay? And you, what you do is you lay that in there, you hook up the thing, and you fill it up. It fills up to the however big your bathtub is. For a standard tub, you're getting 260 gallons of water in that. Now, if you can't afford to do that, all right, you want to make sure that you seal off in your tub because you want to fill that tub up. All right, that is very important, folks. So you want to fill that tub up. You want to seal off the drain so no water can get out and fill the tub up as far as you can fill it up. So this way here, at least you have some water to, say, flush the toilet, maybe to clean with, um, sponge bath with, or whatever else that may need to be done. Now, I would suggest if you're not going to use the bathtub little bubble that fills up with water, I would suggest that you make sure that you clean your tub very well and rinse it really good before you fill it up. So this way here, the water is somewhat clean, all right, if you need to use it for drinking water. I'd try to use other things for your drinking water and use that for the other things that there's going to be needed. Because if you got to go to the bathroom and they turned off the water, guess what? you got to have water to flush it. Make sure that you do have a five-gallon bucket handy because if you live like here in Florida, there's retention ponds like everywhere, all right? You can always go out and get the water out of the retention pond to bring it in with the five-gallon bucket to flush the toilet. Another tip that you can use, it doesn't have to be the water that you're saving in your home. It depends on the situation that you are in. Now let's talk about your refrigerator, all right? Now ways of making those items last longer. Say you don't have a gas generator. I have a gas generator that runs all my big stuff, all right? I use all my battery banks. I have small ones and everything else to run all the other said products and recharge them. Now, my refrigerator and those type of items, I have a gas generator. Your gas generator needs to be far away from your home, all right? Little one-on-one uh, -on -one here, because this is very serious, folks. You keep it as far away from your house as possible. If you're going to have it on the back side of your house, you don't want windows open back there because of the carbon monoxide poisoning that can take place. There is no smell to it. If you bring it in your home and you light it up, you put it in your garage, you put it in a living room, whatever else, you will be dead and so will your family. Let's just cut it right to the chase. We're all adults here. All right. It happens every time there's a storm. Every time that there is some type of a natural disaster, a blizzard, winter storm, powers out, ice storm, hurricane, whatever else, you always hear about somebody dying because they put their generator either in their home, too close to the home, and had the windows open, and that came in, and they're dead. So let's not do that. Get it as far away from your house as possible. Run extension cords into what you really need to do. Only hook it up to your home if you know what you're doing and you have the proper adapters to do so. All right. You want to make sure you have a, a professional electrician come in and put an adapter in to where it is a connect 
and it has a quick connect if the power comes back on. And with that adapter being in there, what happens is it's only powering your house inside. You're not shooting power out into the line because you could have a lineman come and he could be out here working on the pole and all of a sudden he goes to grab that wire and it's supposed to be dead, but you're electrifying it and maybe you kill him and he's trying to get you power back. So if you're going to have that, you want to make sure that you have the proper people come in and put in that adapter system to where the power doesn't go back through the line, the power stays in your house, and when the power kicks back on from the line, it kicks your generator off. It can be done. Just play it safe. All right? Now let's get back to talk about the refrigerator. All right, my final tip here before we get done with this video. Your refrigerator and coolers. You need a refrigerator, you need coolers. Now more than likely, most people have coolers. You want to make sure you have a Cup, you want two really big coolers. One you're going to use, and two is one for storage. All right, now here we go. Follow me with this. All right, so you're going to take one cooler. You're going to start off making your own ice about four to five days out before the storm hits. Now, what you want to start doing is you want to use small containers or a plastic, say, quart size freezer bag. All right. Now, you want to take that, if you fill up a plastic container, leave it at least an inch below the top. If you're going to put the lid in, put it in your freezer so you can stack them so you can make multiple ice at a time. All right? The reason being is ice expands. If you put the lid on, you fill it all the way to the top, it's going to blow your lid off or it's going to crack your bowl, one of the two. And then it's useless. You might as well just throw it in the trash. So may remember, leave it at least an inch below the top. You can put the lid on it. You can put it in the freezer. You can make multiples at a time. When those are done, pull them out. They pop out pretty easy, okay? Pop them out, put them in the cooler. Keep the cooler inside where it's cool or in a cool, dry place or whatever. You know, just keep it to where the cooler isn't hot. Don't leave it outside in the garage, in the sun or anything else. The, the point is we're building our ice pack for the storm. Now, follow me. Take your, your, uh, your bags. Your freezer bags, quart size freezer bags, or storage bags, whichever you choose to use, fill those up with water. Now, with those, you can't just lay them in your freezer on the racks. Reason being is, they're going to form to the racks. Then they're going to freeze to the racks. You're not going to be able to get them off the racks, if you follow what I'm saying. You're probably going to end up damaging the bag, so you only get one use out of it. And, or you're going to damage the rack that it's on. So, quick tip here, you want to use a cookie sheet or a baking dish so you can lay multiples in there, throw those in there, make your ice, and then put those in your cooler. So you're going to have one cooler that's going to be full of all these huge ice blocks. All right. Now, if you can afford, if you can find, so you know, dry ice is a good thing to have, but you got to have, make sure you have gloves and everything else to handle that stuff with. But it is another option to what we are going to do. So, the storm's coming, you've made up all your ice blocks. What you want to do is you want to open your freezer. If you have two freezers, all right, like I have a freezer here, I have a small freezer and a small refrigerator that's out there. So it's, it's not that big, folks. So I just keep like, uh, you know, a few things out there, you know, but what I would do is cram it all into this freezer here. Then I take my ice blocks and I start filling every single hole that's in there. You want to just plug it full, all right? Pretend like you got a hole in the boat and you got to plug it. You want to plug it full of ice blocks. All right. Now, same scenario goes for your refrigerator. But before you do that, you have to make a list and make sure that you know exactly what you use constantly all day long. If you have kids, they're constantly in the refrigerator. You know, I mean, I'm sure there's parents out there like close the refrigerator door. You know, I mean, so you want to get all those products out. You want to get the Kool-Aid out. You want to get the juices out. You want to get the cheese sticks out. You want to get whatever it is that your kid is always in the refrigerator for or your husband or you or whoever else. All right. So you want to make sure that that's all in a separate cooler with ice. Now you take what's remaining in there and you fill it all up with all the rest of the ice blocks. And this way here, it's going to buy you more time down the road. It's gonna get you more time as long as you don't open those doors. The key here is you wanna make sure 
that those doors stay closed as long as possible, folks, because then you're going to maximize the time that you need. What you have to do is you have to buy yourself two thermometers. You need one for the freezer, one for the refrigerator. If the refrigerator goes above 40 degrees and stays above 40 degrees for any longer than one hour, more than likely everything in the refrigerator with, without having you know a few said different products will have to go in the garbage. Your freezer needs to stay at zero. Okay, that's what they recommend. I wouldn't let it go any more than five degrees above five to 10 degrees above zero, you're really starting to push it because stuff will start to slowly thaw. And once you get to that point, you really have to make a decision. If you've been, or you're, you're already out 48, 72, you know, hours and everything else. And if the stuff is starting to go, you're going to want to start firing up some way to cook it. Your barbecue, maybe your neighbor's barbecue, maybe you're going to, maybe you're going to be feeding your neighbors, you know, but it's better than throwing it in the trash can. So, I mean, more than likely in this type of a scenario, it'd be, okay, you know, all the neighbors are going to be coming over. We're firing up the barbecue. We're going to start cooking all this food before it goes bad. At least we start feeding people. And then hopefully maybe somebody has some way to help maybe keep some of this stuff cool so that you can preserve it for maybe another meal and this type of stuff. So you really have to monitor that whole type of situation. You got to make sure that you are keeping without opening the door. Now, what you can do is you put those in there. If you're not going to open the door, then don't worry about it. Just leave them in there. When you open the door, that's when you check the temperature. All right, so don't open the door every five or six hours and try to check the temperature. That's not going to help your situation. You're just going to lose all that cold air. Just leave it in there. What I'm saying is when you access it, check the temperature. Plain and simple. All right, that's where a lot of your dried goods, your canned goods, and all that different type of stuff is all going to come into play because it can keep that closed. You can store your milk and your butter and all this other kind of stuff if you want right in your cooler and, you know, keep that going. And, you know, that can stay. You have all your dry goods. You have everything else you need, your rice, your beans, your canned goods, canned vegetables, canned chilies, canned meats. And the list goes on and on. I've done extensive videos on just about everything that we've talked about today. And now I really want to make sure that people understand why this is, in a sense, like we're going to battle, folks. The reason we want to do all this is we want to succeed at what we are doing. We want to win the war. We want to survive and thrive. And the only way to do that is to be prepared. There's no other way. Nobody's going to do it for you. These have just been some really in, inexpensive. The, I think the most expensive thing I have is this right here, and that cost me 250 bucks. My raw pile's 300 watt generator. But rather than that, everything else is, is relatively cheap under, you know, I'd say under 100 bucks. You know, I mean, a lot of things you can get for even less if you're a thrifty shopper. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I'd like to thank you for joining me today on this video. I hope this gives people a lot of different ideas and a lot of different things that you can do to be prepared to go to battle when these storms roll in, to succeed at winning at the battle, to have the plan in place, to know how you're going to win the battle so that you come out on top. It's called Thrive to Survive. Thank you for joining me. And if you wish, please hit that subscribe button. Share this video with any of your friends and family, especially if you live in a hurricane prone area or a flood prone area even. A lot of this stuff will cover just about any type of natural disaster. So share it with everybody. Until next time, I'll catch all of you on the flip side. Mm -hmm.